The marketing and promises Sony and Microsoft made as their next-gen machines were releasing back in 2020 were clear. 60 FPS is the standard. Of course, 30 FPS would be standard for higher resolution or visuals, but 60 FPS was going to be the other option, the standard for those who wanted a smooth gameplay experience. And at first glance, this was the case. For Sony, Demon Souls coming out in November alongside the PS5 release was an exceptionally detailed and beautiful game that ran at a smooth 60 FPS. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart released in June 2021 and offered 30 FPS and 60 FPS modes, with both running as intended. But let's not forget about Xbox as they released... Uh, anyway, kudos to the Sony developers for this experience for gamers. But unfortunately for 60 FPS, we were looking at what seemed to be the exception, not the rule in this new generation. Now I could sit here and make fun of all the games that run horribly, OH MY GOODNESS! But I won't. The point of showing them is that a lot of the time, 60 FPS cannot be achieved. Whether it's on the developers or the hardware itself, spoilers it's not on the hardware, the end result is the same. We aren't getting that smooth experience. Now. 30 FPS in some games can be awesome when correctly utilizing certain features, such as motion blur on movement, enemies, etc. Additionally, if the game runs at a steady 30 FPS, then that is enough for a lot of people. It depends on the type of game, of course, especially whether quicker reaction times are needed or not, but overall, not the worst thing in the world. The issue, however, is promising a mode that later turns out to not work as promised. Again, this video is not going into how or why the devs are failing at making their games run at 60 FPS, but this background is needed for the point of this video. So let's get to the point of the video. Why are devs not putting in a 40 FPS mode in their games? Now before anyone starts typing, don't worry, I do go through some reasons later on in the video as to why they wouldn't, but for now, let's look at why they should, and why I want 40 FPS as a standard mode. First things first, why 40 FPS at all? Well, it actually is a noticeable difference from 30 FPS. 40 FPS is actually the halfway point between 30 and 60 in frame time, not 45. The math doesn't math, so let me explain. Frame time is simply how long a single frame is on screen before it moves to the next frame. For 30 FPS, the frame time is 33.3 milliseconds, while for 60 FPS, the frame time is 16.7 milliseconds. This makes sense that 60 FPS would be shorter in time. 60 FPS is double to 30 FPS, so you would need to fit two frames in the same amount of time as one 30 FPS frame. Doubling 16.7 milliseconds is approximately the time you get at 30 FPS, which is 33.3 milliseconds. So anyway, 40 FPS actually yields a frame time of 25 milliseconds, the exact halfway mark between the frame times of 30 and 60 FPS. Now, as you increase the FPS, the less of a difference the human eye can see. As a reference, the frame time of 120 FPS is 8.3 milliseconds, half of the frame time of 60 FPS. So again, the math checks out. Essentially, you are subtracting 8.3 milliseconds every time you go from 30 to 40 to 60 to 120 FPS. But notice that you need to add more and more FPS each time. What this essentially shows is that by only going up by 10 FPS from 30 to 40, you would notice a pretty large difference. But it would be a lot harder to notice going from 60 to 80 or 120 to 144 FPS. A lot of people argue over just how much a difference the human eye sees and it doesn't include a lot of other factors, but that's not what's important here. What is important is that the devs just need to achieve 10 more FPS for a noticeable elevated gaming experience. Now on to the main section. I believe 40 FPS would benefit both gamers and developers, and I think we deserve to have it as a standard option. So, let me go into how and why. Wow, it's so... Oh, 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 oh my god! Starting off, when would a 40 FPS mode be needed the most? It would be for those games that run at a stable 30, but not 60 FPS. Final Fantasy 16, I'm looking at you. In the 60 FPS performance mode, the game reduces a lot of detail, but still usually runs between 40 and 50 FPS, and can dip as low as the 30s. Throw in a 40 FPS mode, and many things change. In the 30 FPS quality mode, the game takes advantage of graphical features like ray trace shadows, as well as having a draw distance with a higher level of detail. The 60 FPS performance mode features graphical compromises, and yet still doesn't reach that target FPS. Yet. I believe if the devs put in a 40 FPS mode, they would not have to compromise nearly as much and still attain a steady 40 FPS. But why? Well, because of many reasons. 
First, when a game is running at a steady 30fps, it likely means that the game is running higher than 30fps almost all the time. For example, Final Fantasy VII Remake apparently ran unlocked in behind the scenes gameplay and was hitting between 40 and 50fps. So they locked it at 30fps for a consistent experience. So, Final Fantasy XVI in quality mode is likely running anywhere between 35fps to maybe somewhere in the 40s. So in my assumption here, let's say the game is running on average at 35fps in quality mode, and that they've locked it at 30 for consistency. That means they only have to tune the game by a tiny amount to achieve that steady 40fps experience that I want. So why do I think a steady 40fps mode with little compromises can be doable here even though the devs can't achieve a steady 60fps? Well, because it takes a lot to achieve 60 FPS, it takes a lot more power to maintain a steady 60 FPS because everything is essentially being rendered at double the speed of 30 FPS. That's a lot of power, and that's why the trade-off is usually choosing to turn down the resolution, details, and graphics of the game. A whole lot more goes into it than that, but that's essentially the idea. So is my theory here correct? Would 40 FPS modes be smoother and maintain almost the same fidelity? I believe so, because we have evidence of this. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart updated in a 40fps mode. At the 30fps mode, the game ran at 4K. It runs at nearly the same resolution at 40, and if it dips in resolution, it's not really noticeable. Here, Digital Foundry found that the 30fps mode likely had enough headroom to run at the same settings at a higher fps, but not at 60. In the 60fps mode, the game needed to include many compromises, such as heavily reducing resolution, details, and textures. Forspoken also had a 40fps mode. Though the game as a whole was unstable at launch, the recent patches fixed many issues across the board, and now we can see the game running in this mode that nearly matches the quality mode. The PlayStation 5 version of God of War Ragnarok had a 30fps mode that ran at a native 4K, which is 2160p, but it also had a 40fps mode that ran between 1800 and 2160p, so extremely close in terms of resolution. Yet again, these modes are nearly indistinguishable as far as graphics and resolution go. The PS5 version of Spider-Man and Miles Morales also got 40fps modes, which simply lifted the quality mode that existed to 40fps as a separate option. The beautiful PS5 version of Horizon Forbidden West also had a 40fps mode with little compromise as well. All these games show is that the graphical difference between 30 and 40fps is negligible. I also think that 40fps modes would benefit the developers, especially in the case of Final Fantasy XVI, Jedi Survivor, and other games with good quality modes, but bad performance modes. Why? Because it would allow them to ship the game with two modes, with the 40fps mode being smoother and almost as good looking as the 30fps mode. They would not need a ton of extra time to tune the 40fps mode since it's often close to the quality mode anyway, as I pointed out prior. They could then have adequate time to properly work on a performance mode that actually keeps a stable frame rate. For me personally, I was very disappointed with how bad the performance mode is in Final Fantasy XVI, an action game. If it shipped with a 40fps mode, then that would have alleviated a lot of my frustrations and it would have given the devs proper time to tune the performance mode that could be updated in later. But as an aside, what about games that have stable 30 and 60 FPS modes? Well, it should be even easier to put in a 40 FPS mode here. They know the requirements for running the game at 30 and 60 FPS, so simply tune the game using both sets of settings as a parameter until it runs at 40 FPS. Hogwarts Legacy is a great example of this, where the devs gave us five different modes to choose from. At this point, I want to be clear that I'm not saying 40 FPS should take over as one of the other modes, replacing 30 or 60. I'm not doing that. But having it as a standard option in games, that's absolutely something I want. But some may say, no, I want a 30 FPS or 60 FPS mode in my game. It should be there no matter what. I hear you. Unfortunately, many of the past games, as well as upcoming games, are not meeting the standard. So, if 60 is going to be incredibly difficult to attain or take a long time to make properly, then a much more realistic standard for all parties involved is to provide a 40 FPS mode. So we then come to the question, why don't more devs do this? One big reason is that this mode cannot be utilized by everyone. Most people with TVs have TVs that are 60 Hz. If a TV or monitor is 60 Hz, it cannot run 40 FPS. 
The non-complicated answer is that you need to be able to divide the 40 FPS's frame time into a whole number, which works with 120 Hz. Try to do this with a 60 Hz display and it results in stuttering, which would look horrible. The short complicated answer is that 120 Hz equals to 8.3 milliseconds per frame, and three of those 8.3 millisecond frames add up to 25 milliseconds, which is what the 40 FPS frame time is. Basically, you need to be able to divide everything properly. Anyway, a lot of gamers don't have this 120Hz display, so why would devs provide an option that a ton of people won't bother utilizing? The other major reason as to why devs don't include this option, it is certainly the case that making a video game means sticking to a strict schedule and being under major time constraints. Most gamers won't use the mode, so why make it? 60fps is also that magic number, so anything less is not as sexy, or in some cases, devs can also just be lazy, plain and simple. But of course, I disagree with these reasons, because first of all, even though a lot of gamers don't have 120Hz displays, it doesn't actually matter that much. A lot still do. If you have a decent monitor, you probably have higher than 60Hz, and the next standard is 120Hz in that case. There are also a bunch of options in games that the majority of people just don't use. Some examples include HDR, because it doesn't even work properly with many expensive displays, yet it's always an option. Accessibility options won't be used by many gamers at all, yet they're always in there in some fashion. There's also 3D audio, but you need a specific headset to utilize that. The list goes on and on. But what about the time constraints argument? Well, it's obvious in game development whether or not a game... Choo choo, motherfucker. It's obvious in game development whether or not a game is going to be stable or not upon release. Let's go back to Final Fantasy 16 for a minute. There's no way that the dev team looked at this game in May, one month before release, and said, yeah, we can get close to fixing this. I say there's no way because performance mode literally runs in the 30s at points. What the hell is even that? In this case, it would have been much easier to tune the game to have a 40 FPS mode and simply say we weren't happy with the performance mode, so we're going to update that in later. Ask yourself, would you rather have a 40 FPS mode that is pretty much the same as 30 FPS, or you just get a piss poor performance mode? I don't know about you, but I'd rather have the 30 and 40 FPS modes now and wait for a 60 FPS performance mode later. The gamer wins out and it attracts less negative media attention as well. Like I said, it gives the devs more time to work on the performance mode while meeting their game's release date. The same train of thought should be given to the devs who are lazy. 30 FPS works, but if there's no 60 FPS mode at all, or it runs like crap, then just tune the game until 40 FPS runs smoothly. It's much easier to do than 60 FPS, and it gives you a better reaction from gamers. We now come to the end of the video. To summarize, I think 40 FPS should be standard, just like how 30 and 60 are. Does that mean 40 should replace the other modes? Of course not. But by including another standard, you are simply giving the players more options, which is always invaluable. Right now, 40 FPS isn't thought of a lot, but it is truly a unique area that provides a much smoother experience with little compromise and fidelity. In fact, many who have played in this mode do notice a difference and are impressed with the performance. Additionally, more and more TVs run at 120Hz nowadays, and there are budget monitors that run at 120Hz or higher as well. I think 40fps will continue to become more and more popular, and there are upcoming games that could benefit from a 40fps mode as well. But ultimately, it will be up to the developers, and whether or not they find the benefit or value in putting in such a mode. It's obvious that some devs already do, We'll just have to wait and see on the others. Anyway, I would love to hear everyone's opinions. Feel free to comment why I am wrong too, because I definitely didn't include a ton of arguments that are against 40 FPS. Also feel free to explain how this all works in more detail, as it's all very complex. Anyway, I would like to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.